Hey everyone, welcome to Annotate This. Uh, super excited to talk about our latest releases and talk a bit about our 2024 roadmap. I'm Joe Ferraro. I uh, run the revenue, so uh, customer facing teams here at Hypothesis. And I'm joined by Christy DeCarolis. Uh, she's our lead customer success manager. And we're super excited to talk about some of the releases that have come out this semester, what to expect for the spring, and also what's coming in 2024. Because uh, this is a product feature roadmap, we do want to hear feedback from you as our customers and users. So if you have features that you would love to see in the tool, feel free to drop those into the Q&A function uh, in Zoom, and we're going to be collecting those and sharing them with our product team. But um, as I mentioned, I'm Joan. I'm joined by Christy. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the 2023 product themes, what's come out, what's still to be released, uh, talk about some partner resources. Uh, if you're not yet a Hypothesis customer, talk about an offer just for you. And also answer Q&A uh, for anybody that has additional questions. Uh, so this year we had pretty ambitious product themes. First, finding ways to increase social engagement among our student and faculty users. Uh, finding wider content coverage for annotations to take it out of just the LMS into the different types of media that you're using in your courses finding ways to improve efficacy and efficiency and improving our platform integrations, whether those are LMS or working with external then external partners. And uh, we've got a lot of progress that we've made um, for increased social engagement. We have rolled out our digest emails beginning this summer. For wider content, we've expanded to video. We've expanded to library resources such as JSTOR and any textbooks that are purchased via Bookshelf by Vital Source. Uh, for improving efficacy and efficiency, we've rolled out several grading improvements and beginning next semester will allow you to reuse annotations in multiple courses. And then in terms of platform integrations, we have made updates across LMSs, across our workflows and across the assignment workflows that you use every day to improve the features that you have and make this more seamless in your classroom experience. And so the first was increasing social engagement. And um, we know how important this is. And so I'll let Christy talk a bit about it. Yeah, so um, this has come from a lot of customer feedback about wanting to know when students are actually annotating the readings. Um, so we earlier this year, I think in around around May, we released the first version of our email digest. Um, and we have been working to improve them since. So when we first released them, the email digest uh, is being sent out daily to your email when students annotate in a document. And the feedback we got from you all is that you wanted to know um, when you know folks were annotating in general. Uh, and we so that is kind of what driv drove our initial release. Um, and then we ha got more feedback as the months progressed. Um, and you want, and we heard a couple of different things from um, all you hypothesis users. Uh, one thing is that you wanted to know specifically which assignments students were annotating. So now the email digest will tell you um, which assignments have new annotations. It will break down. So if you have, you know, week one reading, five students have annotated, week two reading, 10 students have annotated. And so you'll be able to better see if you need to go back, if a student has kind of annotated late in a document, um, you'll be notified of that. Uh, right now, the email digests are coming out daily, but in the future, um, as of around next month, instructors will be able to select the cadence in which you would like to receive the email digests. So if you don't wanna receive them every day, if you want to get them twice a week or once a week or, um, you know, whatever works best for you, you'll be able to select that um, coming next month. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and then I'm going to pass it back to Joe to talk about wider content coverage for our annotations. Yeah, thanks, Christy. And we're super excited about the digest emails because it's a way to deliver a lot of information to our faculty users. And I'm expecting a lot more improvements to come in 2024. So keep that feedback coming. Uh, but we also heard a lot of feedback from our faculty users that there are a wide variety of different formats that you can use to con cover content in your course, whether it's textbooks, PDFs, web pages, or even pages directly in your learning management system, and of course, video. And so we've been able to roll out a few key features over the last few months. 
Uh, the first on the next slide is um, video annotations. So this has been our fastest growing feature since Hypothesis went live. We've added YouTube video and transcript annotations to all of our LMS integrations. And this has allowed folks to use some of the YouTube videos they've been using in their class up until now and allow students to have conversations directly in the margins of the page with the transcript function on YouTube. As I mentioned, this has taken off quite a bit and we've seen quite a bit of engagement from students and a lot of happy faculty. We've also moved out of pilot stage this semester with JSTOR. So any mutual hypothesis and JSTOR customer now has access to the full JSTOR library directly in your learning management system. What does this mean? You don't have to go through the reserve system for JSTOR materials that you may have had to go through before. We've worked with them to ensure that this is in alignment with the contracts that you've got uh, at your institution and can actually use these directly in the LMS. We've seen a lot of great engagement on a ton of scholarly works this semester as we've rolled this out as well. And then, of course, we've also rolled out content coverage for Vital Source. So we have an integration with Bookshelf for Vital Source. This has been available for our mutual customers this semester. And we're actually super thrilled because we've seen that this has improved student reading and engagement with course material anywhere from three to six acts, depending on the course and the institution. It gets your students to read and it gets them away from the discussion board where we see that there's not a ton of engagement. As we move into the spring semester, we are super excited to let everyone know on this call, if you're not a Hypothesis customer with an enterprise license, you can actually use Hypothesis in your course on Vital Bookshelf by Vital Source. Uh, we're offering a Hypothesis app that's available for student purchase in the Vital Source store beginning in the spring semester. So this means that instructors and students can access Hypothesis without that institutional agreement, and it supports three payment methods. First is the individual student purchase that you see for a lot of courseware. We're also able to support inclusive and equitable access to really help drive down the cost of attending institutions and give students access to a world-class uh, platform. And so that will be rolling out next week. If you are a non-customer, check your inbox to learn more about that early next week. And then also we've got Canvas pages, and I know this is something that we're super excited about, thought it'd be easier to show than tell, so Christy, take it away. Sure, so uh, we heard from a lot of Canvas folks that uh, use being able to annotate over pages would be very helpful because a lot of people are moving into developing content in Canvas pages because it's easier, first of all, to create more accessible content uh, using that HTML backend on Canvas pages. And folks are kind of kind of piecing together and developing their own content, uh, especially for online courses. So I want to just hop over into Canvas uh, for our Canvas customers and show you very quickly where you can find that and what it looks like. It won't look super different from annotating a traditional Canvas file, uh, but just to give you a sense of, ooh, I just stopped share instead of switching my tab. Uh, so. If I go to create an assignment in my Canvas course, and this is key, um, so folks often are going to be looking under Canvas pages to look for the annotation tool. You still wanna follow the original workflow that you would be using with Hypothesis. So in this case, I'm gonna click plus assignment to create a new annotation assignment in my course. And then I can create my assignment name. I can input my instructions as I normally would, as well as the grading. And then when I find my external tool from the submission type, again, following the same instructions I normally do, and click on Hypothesis, um, coming in the new year, unless your institution decides to turn it on early, you'll then see Canvas page as an option to choose when you go to create an assignment. So typically people are grabbing Canvas files most commonly in a Canvas course, but Canvas page is now an option, um, or it will be coming in the new year. And uh, I can choose, I'll see any Canvas pages I've created in my Canvas course. So I'll select the Canvas page I'd like to use, continue. And then once I save my assignment, when I open that into a new window, um, I'll get my you know, traditional hypothesis annotation sidebar that appears um, right over the, the content that I have created in my Canvas page. Um, so again, the annotation piece does not look different, but I am grabbing a Canvas page instead of a file in this instance. 
Um, so we're super excited about that. And that is coming in the new year, unless your institution elects to turn that on early. Um, so I will hop back to our slideshow. And Christy, we've got a question from the audience. Uh, do you have to have LTI 1.3 for Canvas pages? Yes. Um, so I believe any of the new features that are coming in the new year, uh, you will have to be on LTI 1.3. And if you have not uh, shifted to LTI 1.3, I would recommend reaching out to our support team and perhaps scheduling some time um, close to the holidays maybe um, to make that shift. Because um, it, it should not may have any interruptions to you know current assignments, but I know folks are a little uh, uneasy about doing it mid-semester. Yeah, and then these pages need to be published and in a module before you can add the tool, just like any other assignment, correct? Um, they have to be published. They don't have, I don't, they sh don't need to be added to a module. So I would actually recommend that you publish the page, but I would as an, this is the instructional designer and me talking, I would not add the page to a module. I would add the assignment where you have created the an annotation assignment for the page to the module. So students are only going to that annotation assignment and not necessarily like seeing the page otherwise, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And um, one more question from the audience. What would the advantage of annotating a page be instead of just a file in Canvas? So, I mean, it really depends on where you've created your content. So a lot of folks, since moving to Canvas, um, some people have created content directly in Canvas instead of creating it as a Microsoft Word or Google Doc. Um, so it's just a matter of where that content is already living. Um, it's also easier to embed things like videos uh, and images into Canvas pages. So if you have some interactive content that you are loading in, that could be a plus. Um, and some folks find it a little bit easier to make the most accessible material in a Canvas page. Um, so using the heading styles and, and things like that over something like a PDF um, where the this is getting into the weeds a little bit, but uh, a lot of the the tags that are required for screen readers to more easily read the PDF are not usually embedded in those automatically. So it can be a little friendlier for students with visual impairments who are using screen readers to access the text um, to read a Canvas page over a PDF. Okay, that makes a ton of sense. Um, so I don't, I see some folks asking about similar options in other learning management systems. Um, and at this point, um, we don't have plans yet, but we would love to hear feedback. So we can definitely give that feedback to our product team. Um, and let me just keep, I'm going to stop sharing again because Zoom won't let me unpause my share. I don't know why. Uh, so I'm going to reshare. Uh, okay, so moving on to our third theme, unless Joe, are there any other questions that might be helpful to address? Um, not yet. Okay, thank you. So our next theme throughout 2023, which I can't believe we're kind of coming at the tw at close of 2023 now, is improving efficiency and efficacy. Um, and one of those things is for faculty who go in and add their own annotations to a document, um, and they are wanting to reuse those annotations from one course or group to another course. Um, so those, and the ability to export annotations as well. So this is another theme that we are going to be releasing in the new year, a new product feature, um, and that would be the ability to reuse your annotations. So the current behavior is that if you copy your course site in your learning management system, um, and this can some of the details of this might depend on what learning management system you're using and what file type you're using with Hypothesis, but uh, largely you can copy your course site from semester to semester and carry the Hypothesis assignment over itself. However, the annotations don't carry over with that assignment, largely because we don't want our student annotations to carry over, right? We need a fresh slate for students to annotate in the next semester. 
But if you as an instructor want to go in and add your own annotations um, to model annotations for students or to prompt students with questions, those can be quite labor intensive to add and then move from semester to semester. So that is where our new export and import feature comes in so you can more easily move those annotations. Uh, so again, hopping into, um, sorry, I keep having to switch. Uh, my Canvas course. Um, and this, I'm demoing in Canvas, but this is going to be available in all of our learning management systems. And the process will be the same because everything is occurring within Hypothesis, not within the learning management system. So I can go into the assignment that I want to grab my annotations from. So you can see in this book chapter, I have added a bunch of annotations on the right for my students to answer questions. I want to click on this little share button at the top. And now I have the option to export my annotations. Um, so I can click export. That will download a file to my computer. And then at this point, I have a couple different options depending on where you want to import those annotations. So in this case, I have multiple annotation groups set up in my course. Um, so I want to import the annotations to another course group. Um, I'm going to go, it looks like some of these I already imported, but you can also go to the same reading in a future semester and import those annotations over. Um, so you can see here, it already has, um, I can go over to the import tab and select my file from my computer. Uh, and then I click import and it will bring over my top level annotations. So if you have replied to students in a prior semester, those annotations won't be imported into the new reading. It will just be those top level annotations that you've made on a reading. So we're really excited about that rolling out in the uh, new year because that'll make the export import or the reusing of annotations easier from term to term and using the same annotations from group to group. Um, I see a couple questions in the chat. Um, exporting and importing works for page notes as well. Yep. So the page notes are technically considered annotations. Um, so they would be included in your export and import. Um, Students can export their annotations. At this point, it is in a file type that would not really be friendly for outside use, um, but in the future, uh, that should be changed. And yes, I see someone asked, the file type of the exported content is currently a JSON file, um, but in the future, we're hoping to make it so you can choose what kind of file export you would like. So you don't necessarily have to export and import it into the course, but perhaps do other things with those annotations if you have the file as a CSV or something like that. Um, and then the export and import feature, that will be something that should just become available um, in the new year unless you choose to turn it on early. So great questions here. And finally, I have figured out how to keep my screen share going without having to stop and go back to my slides. Um, okay, so moving on with our efficiency and efficacy um, theme. And this is something that if you came to a prior annotate this webinar, this might be review, but just for folks that might not have heard about this so far, um, but for those folks who are on Moodle and Brightspace, uh, we have made some improvements to our grading bar after getting lots of feedback from our faculty customers. So now you'll, when you create an assignment, instead of the grade bar being limited to a grading out of 10, the grading bar will actually reflect the point value that you have indicated for your assignment. So there's no like need to explain scaling or figuring out like what your grade point will be, you know, what that equals out of 10. In addition to that, uh, we have added the ability to add a private comment. So this little uh, kind of post-it icon that you see in the grading bar shows, if you click on that, after you input the grade, you can input um, 
a private comment for the student. So the student will receive that in the grade book in either Brightspace or Moodle, depending on what you're using. So that should make it easier to both provide, again, private feedback to students and grade using the grading scale that you have chosen for the assignment. And we haven't forgotten about you, Blackboard users. We are going to be rolling out the same improvement uh, within the next month or so for Blackboard as well. All right. Um, so I believe that I am handing this back to Joe to talk about. Oh, no, it's still me for theme four. I get to talk a lot about a lot of themes here, Joe. Hope you're not jealous over there. Oh, it's all right. Um, <laughs> um, so seamless platform integrations. I will provide some updates about some changes we have made to platform integrations. Again, some of this might be a review for folks that have attended a prior version of this, but just in case you have not heard about these updates. Um, over the course of 2023, we wanted to make the integrations that we have in Canvas. Blackboard, Moodle, and Brightspace work a little bit more smoothly. Um, so a couple of things that you might have noticed if you're observing things carefully uh, is that we made it so if you're using the Canvas files integration, if you're picking a file and setting up an assignment in Canvas, um, the you can now, it used to be that all the files would just show up and your folder hierarchy wouldn't reflect in that file picker. You can now see the Canvas folders there. So it's a little easier to go through um, those Canvas files and find what you need. For our Moodle, Blackboard, and Brightspace users, uh, you now have the ability to edit the hypothesis assignment after it's been created. So if you need to swap out a reading or enable groups after you've created that assignment, you don't have to recreate the assignment from scratch. You can just go into the annotation assignment and click that little edit button that has appeared next to the title. We've also done a lot of work on Brightspace as a lot of folks have been shifting over to Brightspace uh, this year. So we enabled the ability for Brightspace users to choose files from Brightspace, um, use Brightspace group sets to create small group annotations. Um, and we also have improved the workflow in Brightspace as well. So this is something that um, we started to roll out last month. This is, uh, if you're a Brightspace user, you do need to contact our support team to enable our new workflow. It, it takes a little bit of tweaking on, um, on your end. We can't enable this from our end. But uh, the new assignment workflow for Brightspace makes it so that when you click on existing activities to create a hypothesis-enabled reading, instead of having to click on external learning tools and then copy and paste that URL every single time you create a hypothesis-enabled reading, um, you will find hypothesis in this ex existing activities list. Once you click on this option, it'll give you that hypothesis file picker. So the new assignment workflow is a lot more user-friendly. Again, no copying and pasting of the URLs. Um, you can just choose hypothesis and pick the file or website that you would like to annotate. Um, but again, we do need some work from the administrators at your school to enable this. Um, we can't kind of force it on our end. Um, and then for a vital source, we are making an improvement to the user experience there. Uh, soon you'll be able to select the chapter or page range you would like students to annotate within vital source eText. So if you're using the vital source integration, you'll be able to more finely choose what students should be annotating. Um, all right. So I think for our last few slides, I will pass it back to Joe for real this time. Um, so Joe, can you wrap us up? Thanks, Christy. And um, one thing we've been hearing from a lot of our customers and from prospective customers is security is important. And so we're actually really pleased to announce we'll be the first social annotation tool in the market that has SOC 2 compliance beginning in January 2024. 
For those of you who aren't familiar with SOC 2, your legal teams and your IT teams are probably asking about it all the time, but this is a compliance standard that just shows how we manage your customer data, which is especially important when we think about federally protected student data and FERPA. Uh, so we're currently in our observation period. We're at 99% compliance, and we will have effectively met all of that compliance requirements at the beginning of the spring semester. If your IT departments or your legal departments have any questions, feel free to reach out to uh, your account manager, and they will be able to get you a copy of the SOC 2 and any additional information that you need. But uh, security is very important to us for a variety of reasons, and we're super proud of this compliance. And as we think about 2024, there are really four big themes we're thinking about. First is data and reporting. We've seen over 10 million student annotations this semester, and we still have three or four weeks to go. That's a lot of data and a lot of ways to wrangle it together. And so we are in the process of rolling out new dashboards and reports in the 2024 year to give you more visibility into what it is your students are doing. But as our users, we want to hear from you what you'd like to see. So again, feel free to use the Q&A to drop in any product requests. Um, increase content coverage. That could be anything from pages in D2L to additional publishers or even Beth's question here, potentially files supported and stored in Moodle. Uh, our goal is to have LMS parity as much as possible. And so we want to cover any type of information that you're using in your course. Also hearing a lot about AI in the classroom and for educators. And again, this is a pretty touchy subject and something we would love your feedback on. How could you see AI really improving your experience in the classroom and how can you use it with annotation? We've got a couple ideas, but we really would love to hear from you since you're the ones that use us our tool every day. Uh, and then the uh, last piece is our continued focus on accessibility. Uh, we've been making updates for screen reader and for a variety of different uh, accessibility tools over the last uh, several months and year. And we are committed to uh, continuing to stay up to date on our VPAT and WCAG compliance. And so that will be another priority for us in the coming year. Um, but we also have a couple of things we wanted to talk about. Uh, first is just our Social Learning Innovator Awards. Uh, this is the first year of these awards for some of our power users. Uh, we saw so many different inspiring use cases across a variety of different types of disciplines and different types of institutions. And next week, we are going to have a webinar with many of these winners talking about how they're using it in some of their specific courses. There will be a link in the chat below if you're not RSVP'd already. We'd love to see you there. And then we would love to uh, tell you more about um, how these folks are using it in the classroom. Congratulations to all the winners that are listed here. Uh, we also have partner workshops, uh, especially as we kick off the semester. There are a lot of new folks who are getting started with this for the first time. Uh, we have LMS specific workshops throughout the month of January. Uh, we've got our Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, and D2L Brightspace partner workshops. And again, there will be a link to the registration uh, in the chat just below. Uh, and feel free to invite any of your colleagues to these events to understand how social annotation can really activate your classroom. And then also, if you've used it and want to become an expert, we've got Hypothesis Academy. And this is something that is a two-week course designed to teach you not only how to use the Hypothesis tool, but how to design your course with social annotation and assignments in mind to best support your students' learning. There will be a link to that as well. And you can register for the next cohort in the link that will be in the chat. We've had over 500 instructors this year who've received this credential, and they are some of our biggest users and are seeing some really great results. And then last but not least, if you are not a current customer, there's never been a better time to get started. We've got our spring starter offer, which will offer new schools, discounted pricing for the spring term, faculty workshops to train your team on how to use Hypothesis. We are waiving our implementation fees, and the subscription does include uh, access to Hypothesis Academy. So feel free to reach out to our partnerships team at Education and Hypothesis to learn more. And so now we will uh, go to Q&A. We've been trying to um, answer a lot of these as we go. And um, 
So let's just take a look at some of these different. Yeah. So I was trying to keep an eye while you were finishing things up, Joe, because I know those can like you go back to the Q and A. It's like, oh, where did all these come from? Um. So we did have one question about the email digest for instructors um someone asked if students also get the emails when someone replies to their annotations that would be really useful um so right now we are not collecting student email addresses and there's no way for us to notify students of that um but it is on our radar it's something that's requested a lot so we do plan to improve notifications in the future um I see another question about the ability to annotate images, um, and that is something, again, very requested and on um, the future radar for the product. Um, so that is, we have definitely heard your feedback on that. Um, so folks that are asking about student purchase, um, please reach out to education at hypothesis, which I will put in the Q&A to find out more information about that. Um, and it looks like Joe is answering some of these questions as well. So I will give folks a couple more minutes to see if we have any other questions. Henry asked, it's 2023. So the obligatory AI question, AI thoughts. Um, yeah, I this want to is hear your thoughts. <laughs> I want to hear everybody's thoughts. Right. This is something we're we're talking a lot about as an organization because there are solutions out there that are doing the the grading for you using AI. If we're asking students to write three to five annotations a week, the least we can do is read them. And so that's not something we're thinking about in the long term. But there are a lot of different ways that this could be used. Uh, and so what we want to make sure that we can do is find a way to be as productive as possible without interrupting workflows. We're hoping to get customer feedback on how they would like to see AI used in their annotations, and we would really welcome any feedback that you've got. And the uh, Innovator and Awards panel webinar is next week. Um, and there is a link to register in the chat with the date, because I don't believe that the slide has the date on it. It just says next week. Well, we can look at everyone's nice headshots anyway. <laughs> Very nice looking slide. All right, final chance. Any other questions lurking out there? And yes, we will share a recording as well as a copy of the slide deck with the group um, after this has ended, as well as anybody that RSVP'd and wasn't able to make it. Uh, and as always, feel free to reach out to any of us here on the Hypothesis team if there are questions that you want some more information about. Yeah, thanks so much, everyone, for coming, and thanks for your questions. Thanks, everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>